Hey guys and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Today I want to talk a little bit about actions in Photoshop, how to create them, what I use them for, and I want to actually show you Alex Nail's web sharpening actions, which I use extensively for my own web sharpening, and then I want to show you how to tweak his actions a little bit for your own purposes too. So let's just jump into it and let's get started with just looking what the hell actions are, where's the panel, all that sort of stuff. Let's do it. So guys, I am in Photoshop right now and at the top right of my screen here, you can see the actions palette up here. If you can't see the actions palette there, what you need to check is up here in window and you need to make sure actions is ticked. If it's not ticked, you can see that actions disappear. So just make sure that actions is ticked and then you can click on it and there you go, you have actions. You will probably just see when you open your actions palette, these default actions. It might be open like that as a drop down. It might not be. You can see I also have TK user actions and I have web resize Alex nail there as well. So let's just jump into it at the outset and just explain a little bit what an action is and how to make them and what it does. So an action is essentially just a pre-recorded set of steps that you can automate. So for example, if you have a set of files open in Photoshop and you're working away and at the end of the edit of each file, you want to say, okay, Photoshop, uh, resize that to 3000 pixels and send it to same said folder. You might be repeating that again and again. So it's an opportunity to program Photoshop to tell it to do that thing again and again. I use it extensively for resizing, changing color profiles, sharpening, stuff like that. So let's just jump in and see how that actually works and see how we go about actually creating an action. So down here we have at the bottom of the actions palette, we have a couple of buttons which are really important. We can create a new set and we can also create a new action. If you're starting out doing this, it's probably not a bad idea to create a new set and just click on that there. And what we're gonna call this is my actions. Now this doesn't create any actions. What this does is it creates a folder that you can store your actions within. So once I have my folder created of my actions, I can then actually use this guy here, which is create new action, surprisingly when you mouse over it, to actually create an action. So just before I start that, let's just talk for a second about what I'm gonna try and do. I have a series of files open here, okay? And these are all edited TIFF files. So let's imagine we are doing an edit and at the end of each edit of each picture that's finished, we have a set of parameters that's gonna be the same for each picture. So let's imagine as a good example that we're gonna create a new action here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this action resize and we're going to hit record now you can see when you hit record that this little red dot comes into play so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit file save as and what i've done before we started here is i just set up a test folder here on my computer and i'm going to save the high res to that test folder and you can see it says tiff here and pro photo or gb because that's how i like to save my high res as tiff Pro Photo or GB. So I'm going to hit save and it's going to pop that file into that area there. So let's say now we want to create a smaller version of this file that we're going to post on the web or something like that. I can hit image, image size, and let's say 1200 pixels. That's typically what I would save my files at. Click OK. That's a much smaller file now, 1200 pixels. Now, what I also might want to do with this file is image mode and change it to 8-bit because 16-bit is unnecessarily large and it also won't work as a 16-bit file when I want to go and save it as a JPEG. It's also in ProPhoto or GB, so I want to change that and convert to profile and from ProPhoto or GB to S or GB and click OK. And then I want to take the next file and go file save as and i don't want to save it into high res i want to go back into that test folder and i want to save it into low res and i don't want it to be a tiff we can see that pro photo has changed down here it's now srgb and jpeg and save and okay so 
If you noticed here on the right hand side, as I was completing those steps, Photoshop was recording those steps because I asked it to create a new action. So I'm going to now hit stop. So Photoshop has recorded those set of steps that I just took with this file from Lake Baikal. We could also, if we wanted, incorporate a close into that so it closes the file after we're finished. Let's do that. Let's do that. And that actually shows you as well how you can also tweak the actions. So I've hit save, but I forgot to add that I also wanted to close the file. So I'm going to select the bottom of the action. It's important that when you want to add something to an action, you select the point where you want it to add because it will add the step after the point you've selected. So in this case, I've hit save and hit record and I'm going to close it. And you can see the close has appeared and stop. Okay, so if we just navigate for a second to the desktop and we take a look at my test folder, we can see I have one high res TIFF, Lake Baikal Beautiful Sunrise. I also have one low res shot in there too. But if I wanted to then send this file in the same way, but use my action, all I have to do is click on the resize action and hit play and it's gone that quick. So that's really useful and really quick. Obviously you record the steps on the first time, but then once you've recorded it once, you just hit play and bang, it just fires the file through. Let's see how quick it is. Let's try it again. Let's try it on the Montenegro file. Play, and it's gone. Play, and it's gone. If we go into our high res, you can see there's now four files. And if we go into our low res, there's also four files. Now they are quite typical steps that I would personally want to take at the end of my edits. I want my high res 16 bit TIFF. I want that master file stored somewhere. Even if I'm using Lightroom and exporting from there, once I finish the edit, I do export a high res master TIFF file as well in case anything happens with a catalog file or something like that. So I also generally create a web file. So that will be a smaller, low res file. When I create the smaller low res file, I need to change it from 16 bit. I need to change it from pro photo or GB. I need to change the pixel length. I need to change where it's going to go. Change steps, lots of different things to do. So the action makes that so much quicker. Whenever I have a repetitive task at the end of editing, I always set up an action. And that happens nearly every time I edit in Photoshop because if I'm editing a trip, like we looked at a couple of files from Baikal there, if I'm editing Baikal, I'll want the TIFF files to go in the same place each time and the resized file to also go into the same place each time. And pretty much any time I edit, I have more than one file that I want the same adjustments to take place at the end as I do at the start. So now you have a bit more of a sense of what actions do and how they work. I want to just jump in and dig a little bit deeper about how specifically I use actions in my workflow and what actions I use. And web sharpening is a massive thing. So let's look specifically at what I do for web sharpening. And I actually use Alex Nails web sharpening actions and they're available for free online. So I'll make sure I provide a link down below so you can jump over there and get them. And they're super easy to download and install. It's an ATN file. You just double click on it and it opens up in your actions palette. Actually, let me just show you that quickly. So the link down below will bring you to Alex's website here. And if you scroll down, you will see resize and sharpen V5. Okay, so if you just click on that guy there, it's going to bring you to Dropbox. And then all you have to hit is download. I would hit direct download, I guess, for myself. Because what that's going to do then when I go and check in my downloads folder, is we can see Alex's actions. And there is two of them because I was playing with this earlier. So quickly have a look. You can see that there is Alex's actions, one set of them. When I double click on this ATN file, I now have two sets. You can see it's loaded in again. Photoshop might ask you when you double click on it, select the software where you want the action to go and you just navigate to Photoshop in your computer and it will go in there. So how this actually works in practical terms, if you see where it says web resize v5 alexnail.com in your actions palette and you just click just there on that little arrow, it's going to open up a series of actions within that action set. 
you can see all these numbers 600 800 1000 1200 1400 etc screen sizes 1024 1920 hd all this stuff down here um, what this is is pixel size long side pixel sizes so if you use the 1000 pixel alex nail action it will create a sharpened converted 1000 wide pixel file so for my own workflow for example i personally like around 1200 pixels to post online so if i wanted a 1200 pixel file i would just hit 1200 and press play and it would automatically resize the image and create a beautiful tack sharp file what i personally find with alex's actions is that they're built for compatibility too so when you press that button 1200 and it resizes the file what it does is it resizes it to 1200 pixels it applies some sharpening to the image it creates a number of layers that those sharpening is applied to and it also converts it to srgb which is the most suitable profile for web viewing but it's not always spot on and that's not to do with any way that alex has created the action it's to do with the fact that different images need different levels of sharpening so quite fantastically with the particular action the way it's set up you can tweak it afterwards so let's jump in and see how we do that so once we hit play it's resized the image is popping looking great but if we look down here in our layers palette we actually have two layers we have sharp and we have sharper so sharp is the baseline sharpening that's applied and sharpen sharper really doubles up on the sharpening and gives it that extra ping so what we can do is if we feel it's still not sharp enough we can go down at 50 percent and tweak that up to 100 percent and you can see it's actually got sharper or what's more likely to happen i have to say with the sharper layer is that you tweak it down a little bit lower so just keep an eye on the image there and i'm going to pop this up to 100 percent quickly and you can see it just got a little zing there so basically after you sharpen initially you can tweak it with opacity and what actually i find useful in terms of tweaking alex's actions a little bit is if i was using the 1200 pixel one which i do quite frequently uh, is actually i hit play on 1200 okay and now i have my sharp and sharper layer down here what i'm going to do is actually i'm going to open up that 1200 pixel action and i'm going to select the final point in the action because i want to add a step myself i'm going to hit record and what i'm going to do is with the sharper layer i'm actually going to bring that down to 20 percent and that works better for me so i'm just tweaking his sharper layer a little bit because i find that that looks a little over sharpened for me personally so now what will happen each time if i hit stop there and you can see the set current layer has been added if i take uh, late baikal and i hit 1200 pixels and i hit play we have sharp we have sharper but the sharper layer is now at 20 percent opacity so that's allowed me to automate the automation to my own needs one other thing which is kind of useful is let's say we take another file here and we say that we are going to hit 1200 pixels again we hit play and again we bring the file up a little bit there and we can see again it's 20 percent but what we can also do with this sharper layer because it's a white mask we can take a brush and we can put the brush on black i'm just going to make that brush a little bit smaller and i'm going to move up the opacity to 100 percent i can actually brush the sharpening out of an area that i don't want it to be in we can also do that with the sharp layer we could add a layer mask and again we could brush the sharpening out of the area we don't want it to be in which might be the case for example with this tree so all the directionality of the image is led towards this particular tree we could also say once we've popped that a little bit we want to brush a little bit of this out and you can see how that just dumbs down the sharpening in these areas but maintains it in the tree so not only are these actions fantastic in terms of the range of sizes that they have the great job that they do on the sharpening if you automate it you can also tweak the actions a little bit to your own needs 
just by that opacity change that we just did there using the brush and Alex has set them up really really well to allow you to do these little tweaks. Okay guys let's try and take this one step further and combine what we learned in the first section with the different bits we learned about Alex's actions and combine it into one of our own customized actions. So let's see how that works. I've just cleared these steps from the resize section here. So I have resize selected and I am going to hit record so I can record a new set of steps. And what I'm going to do is click file, save as, and I'm going to find our test folder on the desktop again. And I'm going to send the high res version there. Again, note TIFF Pro Photo RGB and click save and then what I'm going to do is just change things slightly compared to the first example we did where we resized the file to 1200 pixels and we sent it straight back in what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to play Alex's sharpening 1200 pixel file while I'm recording and now that has sharpened that image and What's actually happened there now is we have incorporated Alex's action into our own action. We can then click File, Save As, and we can send it back into the test folder to the low res area. We do have some layers still active and we have it wanting to be saved as a TIFF. So that just highlights a little issue that we might have so let's just cancel that for a second so really what we need to do is if we want to automate this totally and close it we now need to incorporate layer and flatten image into our action and you can see it's recorded flatten image there now I can do file save as and head to low res move from TIFF to JPEG we can see it's sRGB hit save Okay, and we can either incorporate a close into the action, which we've done there, and now we hit stop. So if we were to take our Baikal file this time and hit resize and hit play, it will save the two versions into our test folder. The high res is there now, and so is the low res, looking nice and sharpened and all that sort of stuff. So. I guess it comes down to personal preference the next step do you want to incorporate the close or not and what i mean by that is if i just dump the close out of the action there and i hit resize and this is probably what i'm more likely to do is hit play so it saves my tiff it resizes with alex's action and then i take a look at the file at 100 percent and I see do I need to tweak it any further. The layers have been merged, so I can't go directly in and tweak them, but what I can easily do is just go into my history and just go back one step where I incorporated the flatten image into the action, and now I have my sharp and my sharper layer, and I can tweak the opacity of either of them, add layer masks, use brushes as we did before. So fully, fully, fully flexible. So guys, if you've made it this far, I'm guessing you found the tutorial useful. So please subscribe, hit the bell button to make sure you get notifications as we post new content on the channel. Thanks a million for watching. I hope that that was useful. This is the way I save my tiffs, the way I sharpen my files. So maybe it'll be useful for you too. See you soon, guys. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.